Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're gonna stick weld some thicker steel. So I have some half inch thick mild steel tacked up in a T-joint here. And I'm gonna run a fillet weld on each side. One side, I'm gonna use a high deposition electrode and a single pass. And then the other side will be my favorite electrode with three passes. So the high deposition electrode we're looking at is 7024. Um, a common term for it is jet rod. That's actually Lincoln's trade name. I think it's Lincoln. Anyway, um, this has not only uh, a larger electrode that I selected, but it also has a ton of iron powder in the flux. That's why the flux is so big. And that uh, deposits just a ton of material in a hurry. Um, it is limited to the flat and horizontal positions because you're putting down so much metal so fast. Now on the other side, I'm gonna run my favorite electrode to run, the one I've run the most, which is a 7018. This is a 1 8 inch 7018. So it's a little bit smaller diameter electrode. And while 7018s do have some iron powder in the flux to increase deposition, it's a lot less than a 7024. I've run a lot of 7018. I'm really familiar with it. I have not done much welding with a 7024. So I'm learning a little bit here um, alongside you to see where this might be useful. I've run a few of them, but not many. So this is the welder I'm using today. It's the MIG 2800 from HTP. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you know they've been a longtime supporter of what I do here, and this is one of their new models. I've used it on some videos with short circuit, spray transfer MIG, dual shield flux corn. Today, we're gonna do some stick welding with it, and it also has an arc gouging mode. I'll put some links in the description to the other videos where I use it on wire feed, as well as to the product page, so you can learn a little bit more about this if you are in the market for a machine like that. Now, one of the hardest parts here is just lining up to strike an arc with all of that thick flux on there. But once you get it uh, lit up and camp out for a split second to establish the weld puddle, you can just rest that flux right on the material and it controls your arc length. This is often called drag rod because you can just drag it along and it's one of the easiest electrodes there is to run uh, in my opinion and a lot of other people's opinions so i'm running 180 amps here um, for this 5 30 seconds inch electrode and i'm paying attention to my work angle and travel angle and travel speed uh, just the fundamental elements of technique that i teach in my online courses if you're trying to just learn to weld it really is those basic fundamentals that uh, if you understand, you can really run just about any electrode that you want um, and learn it really quick. So if you want to learn those from hands-on exercises, check out the description for links to my courses. But uh, that weld took a total of 37 seconds to run. All right, let's see what we got. Um, I love a good peeler. It's already starting to peel from the center right there. So not a lot to get this slag off of there. And I could just look at that all day. You know, I wasn't doing anything but dragging that rod. Seriously, it was just resting on the flux all the way along. Easiest weld I've probably ever run. Um, now this looks a little bit smaller than I was expecting. And so I'm gonna grab a fillet weld gauge. Uh, this one right here is a quarter inch gauge. And so if I check the toes, it's close. I think on this bottom side, it's going to be just a little bit undersized. And through the throat, probably be just a hair small. Yeah, so this is going to size at a 3 16 um, which is a little smaller than I was hoping for, but that's what we got with that 5 30 seconds rod. And I'm not sure that you could control a whole lot. You might be able to slow down just a little. I'm on your travel speed to deposit a little bit more weld, but you probably need to go to a bigger size electrode to really get a larger uh, fillet weld than that. Let's run 7018 and see what we get here on the backside. You know, after working with this bigger 7024, uh, this 1 8 inch 7018 just kind of feels like a little baby rod here. Now to run the 7018, I'm gonna need to turn this down to somewhere around 125 amps for a 1 8 inch 7018. It's a little bit smaller rod size and that type of rod just isn't going to take the same amperage and i'm watching this and i've got the nervous hands i'm just wiggling all over the place anyway we'll go ahead and get an arc struck anyway and right here i'm doing basically the same thing now i'm not just dragging the flux along like i did with that 7024 i need to control that arc length manually 
And that's critical. That's really the main variable when it comes to your technique is having a nice short arc length. So I need to be feeding that rod in the whole time. But the one thing I love about 7018 is that puddle is very recognizable and you can see the slag just follows along behind it and fills everything in. So when I finish, I'm gonna flick my rod and that'll get any slag off of the end of the electrode. And you'll see it sitting there just solidifying on the table. Um, and I'm good to go. All right, let's get some slag off of here. I didn't get a slag peel on that one. If I had to run five amps hotter, I think I would have got it. I think that's the issue, but I'm not seeing any kind of undercut or anything that was locking the slag in. Sometimes it just doesn't peel off as easy as others, you know? It's just how it goes, so that's all right. So that bead doesn't look uh, too bad either. Um, definitely a little bit smaller, not quite as smooth as the 7024, but 7018 can be. Uh, just as smooth and it's certainly better than most of the welds at the theme park I was at with the kids yesterday. So let's take a look here. Um, this is a 316 inch fillet gauge and that's what the last weld sized at. And this one is just a shade under so it's going to size at an eighth of an inch. Um, and the other one sized at 316 being just about, uh, you know, barely shy of a quarter inch. Let's run two more passes on this and it's gonna outsize that one, but uh, that was the plan, so let's stick with the plan. Here, notice my angle is facing down into that bottom plate a little bit more and I'm just overlapping that bead by about halfway here. And honestly, I could have ridden up a little higher on the first bead, but uh, sitting right there around halfway is not a bad way to go. And that's going to build a little shelf for my third weld bead to sit on top of. So uh, I'll finish that weld off and we'll take a look. All right, so I cranked that one up 5 amps to 130 and look at that peeler. That's all it takes. You know, you just got to get it dialed right in. But some rods don't peel like that. I had a box of rods once. It didn't matter what I did. It just about took a jackhammer to get it off. I mean, the weld turned out great. Nothing wrong with them per se, but, you know, they just didn't always peel like that with that particular batch. Anyway, so what I've done here is I've run a second pass halfway overlapping that first root pass, and I'm gonna put one more up on top of that, like a little shelf, and that's how I'm gonna make my three pass weld here. Now for the third and final pass, and uh, I'm angled a little bit more into that top plate, but mainly paying attention to my arc length, my work and travel angles, and travel speed, just those fundamental elements of uh, technique. And I timed the arc on time for the three pass weld, and it was almost exactly three times the uh, amount of time that I was welding for the single pass weld. So I had one minute, 50 seconds for uh, just welding this three pass, versus 37 seconds for the single pass. And you've got to add on a little bit of time for chipping slag and loading your electrodes and things like that. So you can see how much more productive it would be to be able to just run everything with those single pass uh, 7024 rods if you can. All right. You can see the little three pass fillet weld. Uh, two passes are showing. And this is a pretty common sequence right here. Let's check the size on this. I think in this case, we probably passed that quarter inch fillet weld size. Yeah, I'd size that at a quarter inch. So, yeah, that's right about a quarter. Let's check through the throat with this side of the gauge. Yep, for sure. Here's the 7024 single pass, just a hair smaller than the 7018 uh, three pass weld there. So. Um, fairly similar result. I think if I were trying to hit a quarter inch size, I'd need to add, um, you know, either a larger rod size here, or uh, I could probably just slow my travel speed down a hair and uh, hit it with that 7024. But either way, a fairly similar result. Now let's go ahead and cut this apart and look at our weld penetration and see what we got with these two methods. Now, if you look at the sparks I'm getting off this, that's because this is a Cermet carbide blade rather than a tungsten carbide tipped blade. 
Um, they do spark a little bit more, but they hold up really well and still make a cold cut, believe it or not. So I had been using my porta band saw to uh, cut through these samples, but I'd go through a blade every time I'd cut one. And so I switched over and started doing this, and it's amazing to me how fast it cuts through and how smooth the finish is. Let's take a look at the results here. The 7018 on the left uh, got good penetration into both plates. That's really what we're looking at from a process perspective. My bead number two is sitting just a little bit low, and so for that reason I have kind of a strange profile, something that's less than ideal. So that is uh, you know, good learning, uh, learning there because from the surface it's a little bit more difficult to tell that it was uh, looking like that. Now on the 7024, you can see there is just a slight lack of fusion down at the root there that could probably be corrected with a little bit higher amperage, but then you're going to be fighting undercut and some spatter, so you're kind of dancing in between there when you're running in the horizontal position and putting in so much material all at once. But it did penetrate into both plates, not to the same extent as the 7018 did. So what can we learn from this? Well. Don't jump to the conclusion that 7024 gives you a beautiful yet garbage weld and 7018 gives you something very nice that always penetrates. On this particular day with the machine settings I used and my technique today and this brand of rod and this particular material and the exact cross section I took, I had a slight lack of fusion and whether that's a defect or not depends on your criteria. The 7018 did penetrate a little bit better and I think it is going to be more reliable from a penetration perspective. Now, I think 7018 is a more useful all-around electrode because you can weld it in all of the different welding positions, vertical, overhead, things like that, um, where 7024 is just going to be that flat and horizontal fillet weld. So uh, it's more of a specialized rod there, but uh, either way can definitely get the job done. I think with a little bit more amperage and perhaps a little bit more work on uh, the exact technique, I probably would get even better result with that 7024. So just keep that in mind. Now I did a similar uh, test to what we did here today with some wire feed processes, short circuit and spray transfer MIG, as well as dual shield flux corn. Some recent videos I'll link in the description. So if you wanna see how those compare, you can check those out. Those were also done with this MIG 2800 from HTP. The more I use this machine, the more I'm impressed with it. Honestly, they really thought about uh, the user in an all day, heavy duty use application, but even if you're a hobbyist, it's always nice to have a little bit better tool and invest a little bit more up front. So uh, check out the link in the description for those videos as well as for the machine. And if you are just learning how to weld, um, watching YouTube videos alone isn't gonna do it. You need to get out there and practice. So go practice this if you want me to guide you through step-by-step -step exercises to learn way faster um, with hands-on practice. Check out the online courses linked in the description below. I keep them as affordable as possible and they'll help you get going faster. Thanks a ton for tuning in. We'll see you next time.